The fact that the New Republic is no longer the militarized, ass-kicking force that it was in Star Wars Legends is a great source of pain for me, as anyone who follows me on Instagram probably already knows. With the signing of the Galactic Concordance and the end of the Galactic Civil War a mere year after the Battle of Endor, the New Republican canon focused their efforts towards demilitarization and creating a stable galactic government. Still, the Navy did exist. We know, for example, that the New Republic Republic did kickstart shipbuilding before the Battle of Jakku. They also captured Imperial Star Destroyers, and at least three Super Star Destroyers, and produced their own ship classes, from the Starhawk to the MC-85 and more. One of these, the Nebulon C, was even introduced after the signing of the Concordance. In fact, Hux calls the New Republic's Navy its cherished fleet, suggesting that there's still something there, at least. However, the Navy was likely moved to a purely defensive role and largely responsible for guarding the New Republic Senate, which rotated across the galaxy, as well as other member worlds. When Starkiller Base destroyed the Hosnian Prime system, the Force Awakens novelization tells us that hundreds of ships were destroyed. Was that the entire New Republic military? And if so, how will the heroes fight back against the powerful First Order? Let's turn to the last Jedi novelization. There are two lines which indicate that there is some remaining force outside of that destroyed at Hosnian Prime. First, we have a line where Hux thinks about the attack, and that it was the heart of the New Republic fleet which was destroyed. This suggests to me that there were at least ancillary portions of the fleet remaining. Later, we get even more detail. The New Republic's home fleet is destroyed, and its surviving senators have dissolved the remaining task forces to protect their homeworlds. Their division makes them defenseless. No power in the galaxy can stand against us. So, evidently, there were elements of the Navy outside of the Hosnian Prime system, and I mean, that makes sense. However, after the attack, like with Legends Imperial Warlords after Endor, the destruction of central New Republic leadership has led to factionalism, and thus the fracturing of military power. And more to that point, note that Hooks refers to the weakness of their division. Remaining New Republic forces may represent some serious firepower. What's more, even if that's not the case, there is another way that we might see some serious capital ships opposing the First Order. As the New Republic's military was downsized, as it was in the days of the Old Republic, star systems would have established their own independent sector fleets, which, again, if coordinated, could offer resistance. It's like how in Legends, the planets of Corellia, or Kuat, or Kaminor, or Bothwi usually had some of their own ships not dedicated to the New Republic protecting their planets. Planet. It's very possible that these could be the Outer Rim allies, referred to by Leia, and it would make sense for planetary militias to be scattered across the Rim. What's more, it's very possible that these allies exist across the galaxy, but only those in the Outer Rim were near enough to respond as the First Order siege crate. So those are two sources of resistance against the overwhelming military force of the First Order. But there are other avenues, and I think the most interesting one is retired New Republic ships. Sure, much of the active fleet was destroyed at Hosnian Prime, however, we know that many other ships were just scrapped or not in use, as the military was downsized. A great example of this would be the Radis, which made its way into Resistance hands. It's very possible that the New Republic's downsizing will actually have somewhat of a benefit. Not all of their ships were in active service. In other words, there may be vessels sitting around somewhere that they can repopulate. And in fact, we saw in the trailer for Rise of the Resistance, which is a future theme park ride, that what looked to me like an MC-80 Home 1 variant was attacked a First Order capital ship. Now, that's a fairly old ship, indicating to me that the New Republic may in fact be going back in their past for weapons to fight against the First Order. Aside from Mon Calamari variants that we know, like the MC-80, we may see more of ships like the MC-85 or beyond. However, we might also see Star Destroyers because we know the New Republic captured a good deal of them, including in fact three Super Star Destroyers. So when you take the scattered elements of the New Republic fleet, and again note that Hux said that the home fleet was destroyed, but the task forces still remained. Local planetary fleets, as well as any ships resurrected by the Resistance, which surely has swelled in numbers as former New Republic military personnel joined the cause, we have a pretty serious fighting force that could oppose the First Order. And although I am worried by leaks 
which say Episode 9 may only be a year after The Last Jedi, I still have some hope for a major capital ship battle, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Today's question comes from Kevin Lyons, who asked whether the UNSC, either before or after the Human Covenant War, would be able to defend the galaxy from the Yuuzhan Vong. And put quite simply, the answer is no. Regarding any differences, advantages, or disadvantages in technology, there's just a huge difference in scale here. The New Jedi Order tells us that hundreds of trillions of beings were killed during the Yuuzhan Vong War. It was basically the entirety of two colonized galaxies going head to head in an all out slaughter. The UNSC, on the other hand, occupies only a small part of the galaxy and had a population of only a few dozen billion. Regardless of how much more powerful they may or may not be on a technological scale, and I do think AI will offer some advantage, without the introduction of some weird forerunner MacGuffin, I just don't see how they can possibly hope to defend themselves. But that's just my opinion, I'm also curious to hear what you guys think about that down in the comments section. Anyway guys, that is all for now, if you have any ideas for future videos let me know, and if you have any Ask Eck questions let me know as well. Until next time, this has been Eckhart's Ladder, may the force be with you.